Uh oh, guess what day it is? Hello everybody out there, thank you for tuning in to Talking Whatever Wednesday. I'm your host, alias Chuck Finley. So glad you're listening. And uh, let's get started by dropping the pluggables. You can follow the show on Twitter at TWWpod1. Facebook.com slash Talking Whatever Wednesday. And wherever you listen to the show, whether it be Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Spotify, Stitcher, or iTunes... Give it five stars. Share it with your friends. Or, you know, feel free to talk shit about it. It's fine. I don't care. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, feel free to email me at talkingwhateverwednesday at gmail.com. Hey, everybody. I, I know there's a lot of uh, really more interesting things going on in the news right now. A couple I might talk about later. I can't wait to. But first, I want to get into some things I've been just, you know, holding back the stuff that I I saved from Facebook and you know other news sources that I just thought were interesting or funny so let's dig into them okay here we go uh, the first one's from May 19th of this year in Rochester Minnesota let's see what began with a woman driving erratically and using a bullhorn to yell at people and it ended when she fled from authorities and crashed into wet concrete Authorities said it began when an officer attempted a traffic stop on a 53-year-old Rochester woman who has been involved in nine incidents since May 11th. And this article was on May 19th. Wow. Okay. Uh, the woman eventually crashed through barricades and went through wet concrete for about 150 feet. Damn. Okay. She didn't just crash into it. She kept going. All right. My, wouldn't your first instinct be to just stop? Just hit your brake. Something. Anything. Alright, maybe it's me. She was taken to an area hospital for mental health evaluation and is face and faced charges of fleeing, first degree damage to property, and no insurance. Because of course she didn't have insurance. <sighs> Good times. Uh, let's see, this next one from May 17th. Uh, again, it's just stuff I held on to. I was planning on talking about it, and here we are. A mother got an unexpected special delivery courtesy of her t two-year-old son. Kelsey Golden answered the door and found a delivery from DoorDash for 31 cheeseburgers from McDonald's after her son got a hold of her unlocked iPhone. Quote, he usually likes to take pictures of himself, and so he was doing that. I thought I'd lock the phone, but apparently I didn't because the DoorDash came with 31 cheeseburgers. After getting the delivery, she didn't know what to do with all those burgers, so she took to Facebook to give them to anyone that wanted some free food. Quote, I have 31 free cheeseburgers from McDonald's if anyone is interested. Apparently my, my two-year-old knows how to order DoorDash. End quote. She said on Facebook. When asked if her son left a tip, uh, Golden told the Facebook poster that her son pl was plenty generous and tipped the driver $16. According to KRIS-TV, the local... Sorry, the total for the order was ninety-one seventy. For the story that this kid, but the story that this kid will have to tell for years to come is priceless. I'm sure he'll forget, but her, his mom will never, ever forget. This next story is not ne not nearly as fun as the previous two, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. Here we go. Uh, the lawyer for Ahmad Ahmad Arbery shooter fears he'll be killed in state prison. This is from August 7th, just a couple days ago. 
the white man who fatally shot Ahmad Arbery has, after chasing the running black man in a Georgia neighborhood, says he fears he will be killed by fellow inmates if he's sent to a state prison to serve a life sentence for murder. And fuck that guy. Anyway, Travis McMichael, 36, faces sentencing Monday in a U.S. Dis district court after his conviction on federal hate crime charges in February. His defense attorney filed a legal motion Thursday asking the judge to keep him in federal custody. There's a squeaky chair again. Attorney Amy Lee Copeland argued McMichael has received, quote, hundreds of threats, end quote, and won't be safe in a Georgia state prison system that is under investigation by the U.S. Justice Department amid concerns about violence between inmates. On February 23rd, 2020, McMichael and his father, Greg McMichael, armed themselves with guns and jumped into a pickup truck to chase Arbery after he ran past their home just outside the port city of Brunswick. A neighbor, William Roddy Ryan, joined the chase in his own truck and recorded cell phone video of Travis, Mc Mc uh, Travis McMichael. You know what? I shouldn't be worried about getting the guy's name right. Fuck him. He doesn't deserve it. So Roddy joined the chase in his own truck and recorded cell phone video of Travis McMichael blasting Arbery with a shotgun. The killing of Arbery became a larger national reckoning over racial injustice amid other high-profile killings of unarmed black people, including George Floyd in Minneapolis and Breonna Taylor in Kentucky. And there's good news about Breonna Taylor's trial if you want to look that up. Good times. In Georgia, the McMichaels and Bryan were sentenced to life in prison after being convicted of Arbery's murder in, what, in a state court last fall. They remained in a county jail in custody of U.S. Marshals, standing trial in February in federal court, where a jury convicted them of hate crimes. Each defendant now faces a potential second life sentence, as they fucking should. Once the men are sentenced Monday by U.S. District Court Judge Lisa Godby Wood, protocol will be to turn them over to the Georgia DOC to serve their prison terms for murder because they were first arrested and tried by state authorities. Copeland wrote in her sentencing request for McMichael, quote, His concern is that he will promptly be killed upon delivery to the state prison system for service of that sentence. He has received numerous threats of death that are credible in light of all circumstances, end quote. Copeland said she has alerted Georgia's corrections agency, quote, which has replied but that these threats are unverified and that is that it can securely house McMichael in state custody, end quote. Greg McMichael, 66, has also asked a judge to put him in federal rather than state prison, citing safety concerns and health problems. Arbery's family has insisted that the McMichaels and Brian should serve their sentences in a state prison, as they should. Arguing a federal penitentiary wouldn't be as tough. No, it won't. His parents objected forcefully before the federal trial when both McMichaels sought a plea deal that would have included a request to transfer them to federal prison. The judge ended up rejecting the plea agreement. Thank you, judge. Good judge. Good boy. Squeaky chair. Hashtag squeaky chair. <laughs> Granting these men their preferred choice of confinement would defeat me, Arbery's mother, Wanda Cooper Jones, told the judge at a hearing on January 31st. It gives them one last chance to spit in my face. A federal judge doesn't have the authority to order a state to relinquish its law lawful custody of inmates to the Federal Bureau of Prisons, said Ed Tarver, an Augusta lawyer and former U.S. attorney for the Southern District of Georgia. She can certainly make the request, Tarver said of the judge, and it would be up to the State Department of Corrections whether or not they agree with it. Copeland's court filing refers to a prior agreement between the judge, prosecutors, and defense attorneys to keep the McMichaels and Bryan in federal custody, quote, through the completion of the federal trial and any post-trial proceedings, end quote. She argued that, that Travis McMichael should at least remain in federal custody through the appeals after his hate crime conviction, end quote. In my opinion, no. Fuck that. Those guys should be in state prison, all right? Yeah, they're in prison for murder first. Then they should go to um, federal prison. And only then. There's a place where only the strongest dare compete. Who are they? The fighters! Karate fighters. You control the action. Dragon Kick versus the Red Ninja. 
Thunderfoot vs. Skull Crusher. You control every punch, every kick. No rules, no referee, no holds barred. Just all contact karate action. The man left standing rules. Each set comes with two karate fighters. Get your hands on the action. This next one is one of my favorites from earlier in this year. It's from June 16th. And this article is on the dailymail.co.uk. All right. An Iowa family has caused a serious controversy after hiding a rude phrase on their late father's gravestone, sparking outrage among cemetery staff who insist the cheeky message is so offensive and has no place, quote, where loved ones are laid to rest. After Stephen Owens passed away on September 2nd, 2021, at the age of 59, his family banded together to come up with an idea to forever immortalize his wicked sense of humor and straight-talking personality. So they came up with a way of hiding Owen's favorite term of endearment on his gravestone, creating a sweet tribute to the late father of two, which also features the phrase, fuck off. <laughs> at first glance, the gravestone at Power Cemetery in Polk County reads much like many of the other tributes inscribed on the monuments around it. It reads, forever in our hearts, until we meet again, cherished memories, known as our son, brother, father, papa, uncle, friend, and cousin. Again, that was first line, father, forever in our hearts, second line, until we meet again, third line, cherished memories, fourth line, known as, fifth line, our son, brother, sixth, father, papa, uncle, seventh, friend, and cousin. Upon closer inspection, the first letter of each line in the tombstone spells out Owen's beloved insult, which his daughter Lindsay insisted he only ever used as a term of endearment. Quote, it was definitely his term of endearment. If he didn't like you, he didn't speak to you. It's just who he was. He was easily riled up. Uh, her brother, Zach, weighed in. It was always a sort of goal to get him to yell at you, to fuck off. <laughs> Despite the sweet sentiment behind the message, staff at the cemetery are up in arms over its hidden meaning. With WIBW reporting that many have been against the tombstone from the beginning, as profanity has no place where loved ones are laid to rest for eternity. The Camp Township trustees who oversee the township where the cemetery is located were and are against this headstone being placed in our cemetery, a statement given to the publication reads. How would, you like to, how would you like to have your spouse, child, mother, father, grandparent, uncle, or cousin, your loved one, or eventually you have to be laid next, <laughs> have to be laid rest next to that for eternity? The Owens family says they have yet to be told whether or not they'll have to remove the gravestone, uh, which they might have since this was kind of an old article, but I digress. However, the township board insisted in a statement provided to WHO 13 that they were informed ahead of time that the gravestone would not be allowed as per regulations that ban any form of profanity from the site. According to the board, the family chose to move ahead with installing the gravestone in spite of the warning. Quote, those others who have a place in the cemetery have the right to decency afforded to them. End quote. However, Owen's son Zach hit back at the staff who have taken offense at the message on his father's monument insisting the family never meant to hurt anyone's feelings, but only ever wanted to show love for their dad. Quote, no one's forcing anyone to come out and look at it. That's a choice you make. End quote. We didn't do it to offend anyone, make anyone mad, or hurt anyone's feelings. We did it because it was our father and we love him, and that's how we remember him. End quote. Owen's obituary describes him as an avid Cubs fan and Steelers fan. Gross who loved his conversation with a shot of fireball, adding that he was also a devoted husband and grandfather. Steve enjoyed playing flag football and slow pitch softball, the online obituary reads. He loved coaching his children and attending their events. Steve was an avid Cubs and Steelers fan. He loved spending time with his family and grandchildren where his pride and joy. He enjoyed his time fishing and vacationing at the Lake of the Ozarks, spending time on Wendy and Danny's porch and visiting with friends and family, he lived his conversation with a shot of fireball." End quote. Okay, um, my take on this, who gives a shit? It's, it's their dad's fucking tombstone, all right? It's, it's for him, it's for them. Who gives a shit, all right? 
and anyone else, you know, everyone else looking at it will maybe, maybe read it. But if, you're, if you don't even look at it, like most tombstones you, you might pass by, you're not going to see it. Who looks at every tombstone in a, uh, in a cemetery? Nobody. Okay? It's fine. This should not be an issue. It's their dads. If that's the way he talked all the time, cool. Everybody else can just, well, fuck off. Hello, boys and girls. This is your old pal, Stinky Whizzle Teeth. This is a song about a whale. No! This is a song about being happy. That's right. It's the happy, happy, joy, joy song. Happy, happy, joy, joy, 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 joy. I don't think you're happy enough. That's right. I'll teach you to be happy. I'll teach your grandmother to suck eggs. Now, boys and girls, let's try it again. Happy, happy, joy, joy, 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 happy, happy
Especially because, as he says, humans aren't the smartest ones out there. We are definitely not. That would probably be the dolphins. So long, and you're welcome for all the fish. <laughs> Most of the mainstream astronomy community contained, continued with business as usual and ignored O's anomalies, Loeb said. Some mainstream astronomers tried to explain the, the anomalies, but needed to invoke objects that were ne never seen before, like a hydrogen iceberg or a dust bunny that are not likely to survive the long interstellar journey. journey. Exactly what the object is, is unknown, but the professor is certain it's an object from a distant alien civilization. NASA can confirm it came from another solar system, accelerated in a non-comet-like way through space, and that, quote, astronomers have never seen a natural object with such extreme proportion in the solar system before, end quote. My point is that it is very difficult to explain the weird properties of O with conven conventional natural processes. So studying objects of its type in the future will either educate us about natural science or about civilization, Loeb said. Let's collect evidence and not rely on prejudice. That's a, that's a very good idea. Uh, his book apparently came out in January 26th of this year, 2022, so check it out. I know I, for one, am going to be looking for that at the library because I'm, uh, I'm a reader on a budget and I love stuff like this. In closing, thank you for listening to the show. Uh, be sure to share it with your friends, enemies, anyone you want to share it with, really. Um, also, put it out there that uh, if, it, if there's anyone out there with some strange ideas, I like to talk to different people. So if you're a flat earther, I want to hear from you. If you are a sovereign citizen, I want to talk to you. and I want to understand how you get to these different beliefs in 2022. Um, so let's talk. Let's have a good conversation. Um, again, feel free to email me at talkingwhateverwednesday at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and I am done. <laughs>